back. Let's see what happens. I turned down the frame rate. Okay. <laughs> that might work. I mean, if, if there's less frames to drop, that, that's, <laughs> that ought to do it. Oh, no. We are losing 80% of frames now, apparently. Oh, my God. 80. Just, somebody's, it honestly feels like somebody's downloading something right now. <laughs> and uh, this is fun. Anyways, oh, it, it's dropping now. We're down to 73. Oh. We're in the yeah, 60s. Let's give it a second. Uh, Vampleb uh, says, "Oh wow, I'll have to look it up." Uh, no, I don't. I don't think you need to. Just, yeah. It's on know. HBO if you really want. I mean, I'll probably watch it honestly because it's on HBO. I got some time to kill. Like, if you put on a bad movie, you don't need to pay attention to it, and you can get other things done. Um, that's true. I believe Buzz is in the new one. I read that somewhere. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Really? Oh, God. Why? Maybe he's like the bad guy. That'd be fun. I know Rob Delaney's in it. Or I think that's the guy. The guy. Ooh yeah. I'm, I have the the window open, and it's like the even the 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 Twitch win video is like is something going on. You might need to lower your. I think it was giving me. Like uh, uh, an alert about how badly it's running. That is waffle. I don't know what I can do about it. I really, I'm not to like compare my settings because it honestly seems to happen every time I try to stream draw bomb. Dropping like that. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I'd say this episode's a bust. Episode 91. This is not. This is not episode 91. The next episode. <laughs> We're just popping in to draw a nice Christmas picture, and then... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're out of here. Get, get lost. Why don't you? Um... Heck. Well, yeah, if it's that bad, we can just call it's it... It's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Well, shucks. I'll finish this picture. You, you, you... I'll take a look at these settings later on. Okay. Um, fun stuff, though. I love it when it's out. It's completely outside of our control, it would seem, and that is my favorite kind of. Uh, God doesn't want our show on the air. I guess not. Why doesn't he just change our languages like in the old days? Now we have <laughs> yeah, to start messing with your internet. That's not That's, cool. Uh, ni hao. <laughs> um. Uh. That's all, all right, I know. Well, That's all the Chinese I know, actually. I don't know anything other than that. Um, should we color the picture? Should we just color it? Anyways? I, I don't know. It, it feels weird trying to talk when no one can hear us or watch. Yeah. Feels, uh... Feels pointless. <laughs> Alright. Well, Vampleb, thanks for tuning sorry. in. <laughs> we gotta figure our stuff out. We gotta find out if it's my internet or what. Um, Maybe I'll have to go back to hosting. <laughs> it might have to be the case if this is the fucking situation. Um, are we? Vampa says she hears. Are we like dropping frames? Are we skipping a lot? Anything like that? We're yeah, because it's OBS is telling me that I've lost seventy-two percent of our frames uh, that we have tried to stream. Um, now we're now it's dropping. Now the internet's doing fine again. Now it's dropping. There's no telling. It, there's no pattern. There's no rhyme or reason to this thing. Um. Oh, zero. Now it's just complete. Oh, there it's back. That was like 100% drop frames there. It only skipped when I first jumped back on. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Am I, am I downloading anything? Like, are any like the multitudes of programs that like demand they run on my computer? Are they like downloading anything in the background? Is Steam? Steam, what are you doing? Nothing. Okay. Um. I don't know. I don't know. Vanfleb, what do you think? This show's just yeah. for Vanfleb. Fuck it. Let's just keep going. <laughs> okay. At least until we get this drawing done. Yeah, well, cool. everything is just updating at 8 p.m. There you go. Maybe. 
Maybe we've chosen a terrible time to start this stream. <laughs> Maybe we need to do a 9 o'clock stream. Although, <laughs> God, could you imagine? That's, I don't know, that's so late. <laughs> we're, we're still doing the show at 9. That's true. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. As we always do. Or sometimes we don't. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes we don't. How about you? Have you seen any new movies lately? Um, uh, no, I'm still just plumbing the YouTube channel that I was, I've was i been plumbing oh, yeah, yeah. the last week. Uh, I did find out that Samurai Cop is on Tubi as well as Samurai Cop 2, and I feel like we should do a bad movie night double feature sometime. Oh boy. Um, Sign me up. So he's a samurai and a cop in, in that order? Or the, is, what, what was he first? I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, Brandon. See, Samurai <laughs> got into law enforcement, or... You're gonna have to watch the movie with me to find out, because, um... That's fair. I don't know why I'm asking shit. all these questions. Yeah, these are the no, types surely of... Surely will be answered by the, by the great written script. Of, uh, of Samurai Cop and Samurai Cop Dose. Um... But, uh, they're apparently very fun, bad movies. All right. I have called okay. Um... I also found out The Room is on YouTube, so I forget, you've seen The Room? Yeah. Okay. I think only Zach hasn't seen The Room. Um, I'd, I'd well, be down to watch that again. It's been I'm a always down to watch The Room again. I still say uh, the one time I saw it in a theater was, like, the best experience of it. I can... I, I would, I would like, ideally want everybody to be able to experience that if, if they like the movie, because it's just, like... It's awesome with like a whole room of people <laughs> freaking out at everything that's happening. Yeah, uh, I, I was very entertained by that. I, I um, actually I, I talked. To, sorry, go ahead. And finish. It. Wait, I had sorry. seen it and I took uh, Morgan and one of and her best friend and they had never seen it and they they were like they were laughing their asses off just because like it was really fun in that environment to see it for the first time. That's awesome. Um, I, I actually, it's funny, this is a counterpoint, I, not for me personally, but I, I talked to somebody like eight years ago or something like that. Like it was like right after I graduated college, I was hanging out with a friend and like we were like stopping by another friend's place to grab weed. And so like I was, we were there, he's like, so I just saw like the room in like a theater, like, a, like with a bunch of people, <laughs> like re earlier today or like last week or whatever and i was like oh that sounds awesome like how was it like doing like rocky horror picture show type like audience interaction stuff like that and he was like yeah man i fucking hated it dude like every uh, time like there was like scenes people would just start throwing spoons at like the screen and stuff and i was like what the heck because apparently there's spoons in the photographs or whatever <laughs> and i was just like well here's the thing i kind of get it like why he would be annoyed because like sure like everyone's yelling at the screen whatever but also like are you gonna sit down and like seriously watch the room like what do you expect like, <laughs> the whole point of the room is and you're yelling at the whole thing because it's ridiculous so like what's sort of like I couldn't hear what was going on people were just like yeah. you know maybe, maybe the Philly crowd's rowdier too like that could be a, a completely be. different like demographic people were yelling and stuff but like I don't know it, it just it was it was very entertaining yeah I think it'd and, be like, fun some, of, some people's reactions pointed out things to the movie that I had not wouldn't have noticed like people laughing at certain things made it like brought it to my attention partially yeah and it was, uh, they were throwing plastic spoons, because Fan Club says throwing things seems intense, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to assume it's plastic spoons. Like, no one's going to bring, yeah. like, actual heavy Metal silverware. Spoon. <laughs> yeah, like, that's <laughs> hey, a I waste. need to get that back after. Tomorrow we'll make it three dollars on a ten-pack at Walmart. <laughs> we're making soup tomorrow, and I need those back. Yeah, stone soup. <laughs> Good soup. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to say stone soup. But, um... Yeah, uh, oh, and Van Fleb says, I'm not even sure what the room is, though. Well, good gosh gracious, have we got a story for you. Um, this guy, his, he's probably French. He said he's from Louisiana, but he's clearly not from America because he speaks in, like, a crazy accent. But it's not quite distinguishable because he's so mysterious and whatever. But anyways, he had a bunch of money, and he moved to America, 
and then he met some folks in Los Angeles, and then he personally financed making a movie. Um, but just to, like, describe the financings of this movie, he bought HD cameras, um, normally you're supposed to just rent the cameras, but he bought the cameras outright, and then they ended up shooting in the wrong format anyways. Um, they, he bought, like, HD digital cameras, but they shot in film or something like that. Uh, and then he also, he wrote the script, he produced it, he directed it, he's the main character. Um, and the story is about this great guy named Johnny, uh, played by the, the guy who made the movie. And he's an all-American He's, he's an all-American great guy, um, who has sex with belly buttons, um, a lot. <laughs> there's, well, I guess he's not in, uh, one or two of the sex scenes in the beginning of the movie, but there's, like, three sex scenes in the first 20 minutes of the movie, and they're all set to the same song, and they all use the same shots. Um. When you say the belly button thing, it's just, it's just these awkward sex scenes where, like, they're, <laughs> anybody with a basic understanding of, Anatomy. you know, it, yeah, they're not lined up <laughs> in a way that makes no. sense. It's, no, it's he's, really awkward to watch. It's, it's, it's something to behold, to be sure. But anyways, it's just a terrible, it's just a terrible movie written by a guy who's not from America. He's, and he's writing what he thinks an America, an American drama would be like about relationships and cheating and things like that. Um, and it's, Bizarre because it looks like a real movie, but it is not at all like a real movie, and it's just full of weird dialogue, strange choices. It's like if you can imagine a movie that's so bad it's funny, The Room is a great example of yeah. what that would be. I mean, some people might, like it might, it might not be everyone's like bag, you know, they might not find it funny, they might just find it awkward and stuff, but I mean, personally, I find it hilarious. And it's a great it's, example it's of, hilarious. yeah, of what a good bad movie would be if if it's like normally your things thing. bad movies like this don't normally get made to this degree because the money. But this guy, like the guy who made it, he's just like like you were saying, he's kind of this mysterious. He doesn't really talk about <laughs> where he came from or anything like that. He's, and he he's tells local, people he's from no Louisiana. He says he's from the Bayou, which ex like to explain his accent, but that's not the case at all. He's not from the Bayou. But anyways, he bankrolled this entire thing, so like he got to do exactly what he wanted. There's nobody to tell him no because it's their money too. Yeah. So it just came out. He made he made this completely bizarre piece of art, <laughs> if you can call it that. Yeah, and it was received so people thought it was so funny that he then re-released. Like when it came to releasing it on DVD, I think he re-released it, branding it as a dark comedy because he thought that's why people were laughing at it. Like, he's just like, people are laughing at it, I don't understand. I'll say it's a comedy. Um, and that's my terrible Tommy Wiseau impression, but, um... Okay. It's bad. It's And it's on YouTube, the full movie, for free, which is, I think, the only place you can watch it at this point. I looked all over Amazon, just kept mm. getting some bullshit Jennifer Lawrence movie. You're like, what the fuck ever, like, win an award or some shit? I'm looking for The Room with Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> um, what is this shit that actually... Yeah. Somebody tried to make a movie that's actually good? What the yeah, hell is this? fucking kid in the fucking room? Like, get the fuck out of here. Um, it's a crazy movie. It's absolutely insane, and it's great fun. Oh no, it's a DVD even? I, yeah, there's. you can definitely buy I've actually, when I was looking for it, I saw that it was available on Blu-ray, I think. And I heavily debated clicking buy the room on blu-ray for twenty dollars the only reason i didn't is because i don't have a blu-ray player so it would be functionally useless i wouldn't get the enjoyment i was looking for out of it so yeah that's not a good purchase if you're, if you're yeah. without the required technology like, normally i would buy the dvd anyways because i'd be like ah, i'll just put the dvd in my computer i'll watch it off my computer but my com computers don't even have disc, disc drives anymore so like <laughs> even less use out of that disc than i normally would have so um yeah <laughs> it's a great movie though i highly recommend it it's on youtube watch the thing in full in its full glory just know what you're getting into you know it's a it's, bad movie it's a you have to be in the mood to watch something that's... It's Trash. like a, it's a sight to behold, yeah. I recommend yeah. it though, 100%. It's like watching a train wreck, but... Uh, no, either... I, I guess the best way to... No, this is a terrible metaphor. Never mind, it's nothing like a train wreck. <laughs> it's like... 
I don't want to compare it to actual human death and suffering because obviously it's not the case. Maybe there's a little bit of suffering involved. I have to assume the people who were working on the movie all suffered. But it's it's trash. It's it's like it's like watching a raccoon like grab a bunch of trash out of a trash can and then try and make its own house like your like try and make like a facsimile of your house across the street um using your garbage trying to make like your house all over again and then like you can kind of see like oh yeah it's a house there's my porch but it's it's made of banana peels and and wet cardboard boxes this is not like my house this is a trash house so made let me to get look like my house let me get this straight. Train wreck wasn't good enough for you, but that metaphor was. Well, because a train wreck means <laughs> people will die. And hey, I maybe like nobody was on the train. Extreme. You know, who the, the, who the fuck train? is running a train that has nobody on it? Uh, I, it wasn't a good decision, that's for sure. I mean, the thing crashed that in makes the end. Absolutely no a, sense. It was a mistake. That's what I'll you, say. You sir, get your facts straight. They are not gonna yeah. run a train. No, they, they won't do it again. Not after energy. that time. What is this, like a test run of a train? Yeah, the first train. They're the like, well, I'm not getting on until I know this thing works. On the track and, You know, ever? it took a few tries. Yeah. And uh, the first one was, was a train wreck. Uh, but after that, they got it down. Sir, so. you are being ridiculous, okay? I surmise that my raccoon trying to create a house out of trash is a much more realistic and plausible scenario than your empty train? Excuse me? I want to live in trash. Excuse me, sir? Um, we're still dropping frames like crazy, but apparently Vanfleb is having no problem hearing us, so I don't know if that changes your opinion on, um, because, like, it's not like it, there's a lot happening on the screen. There's, like, us moving, I guess, but... It's right. mostly a, a single drawing. And if they can sure. hear us... It is mostly that. I mean, we can still figure this situation out because I would like to not drop, like, crazy frames, but... Right. We can right. still make this episode 91 with just a very awkward opening segment. People like to see how the sausage is made, you know? They want to <laughs> hear about the frames. They want to hear about the uh, struggles behind the scenes, I think. I want to see us get dejected as we understand the gravity of our dropped frame situation. That's the running theme of this show. Is our, uh, <laughs> foibles. <laughs> exactly. Struggling to make it work. This is just like all a, uh, a test. It's like an experiment. Somebody's fucking with our OBS and just like recording our reactions every time and being like, okay, this is when Ian Ian gets really mad when he's muted for half an episode. Let's let's just check this box right here. Oh, what's this? Oh, the uh, none of the sounds are working when they've switched people who are running the stream. That's a checkbox right there. Let's see how they react to this one. Interesting, interesting. You can see the soul leaving their bodies as they a show within a show. Up. Yeah. An experiment, a show that is an experiment. It's like a true. It's like the Truman Show, except the Truman Show was still a show, but it was kind well, of an experiment. I'm happy to be, you know, part of. I'm happy to further science, you know. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> Club says, "I want to hear chats about trash raccoons and belly button sex." That's why I show up. Well, you're in the right place. <laughs> uh, we checked all those boxes as well. Yeah, uh, Van Fleb says also they'll search for uh, the room now that they've got all this free time. Um, they say they've got all this free time now. Um, is it, has it, has the situation changed for you, or are you just saying you got, like, a weekend or because it's the holidays or something like that? I'm assuming it's the holidays, actually, now that I'm considering... I know the answer, but... I oh. Let, let yeah, you don't want to dox, or, you know, you don't want to, like, be airing people's... Not necessarily dirty laundry. I feel like that has a bad connotation to it, but, you know... Well, it, it's clean laundry, I think, but, it's, you know... It, you know you don't you don't want to hear uh you don't want to like put your underoos on the wash line um and then the raccoons they come and they take it and they turn it into a uh, home <laughs> a home there's, so there's 
The next time you go to that raccoon, it's like got like a fake family that's like yours. It's just like what? The, when did the when did the raccoon get two raccoons that are in cat ears and a girlfriend raccoon? When did this happen? I don't get it. It's advancing. <laughs> the raccoons, it's upping its game. It's evolving. <laughs> um, they have hands, so that's true. You know, not far. Well, now I finished up my bachelor's, I'd consider it clean laundry. Well, I'm glad to hear it. And I'm glad to hear about your laundry. bachelor's. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Awesome. I, I would play a song, um, but I didn't have anything queued up. Vitamin C's graduation song. <laughs> Do you have that ready to go? <laughs> no, I definitely don't. <laughs> oh, man, that's a shame. Is that the one that goes like, it will always that's be together? <laughs> na, 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 na. Last forever. Is that the one? That's the one. What are the that's rest the of the one. lyrics? Sing it. Uh, no, that, that is all the lyrics. You sang <laughs> that's all the lyrics. That's all of it? Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, have we ever talked about- I know I've talked with you in Austin about our graduation songs. I feel like that was like a whole discussion we had, but... Let's uh, talk about it on air now. Let's start. Well, let's, my brain let's deleted that, song. so let's can do that again. Uh, okay, what was your graduation song? Oh, we had a vote between uh, Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve and uh, some song by a band called Skillet. Um, oh, yeah. And we ended up with Bittersweet cool. Symphony. So Good old it, was like a we it was a weird gender divide. It was like. I noticed a divide in the genders on who was raising their hands for what song. Um, and uh, that, that was interesting. I don't have anything to comment about that or any data to derive from that. I just thought that that was... I noticed it, and I was like, well, oh, that's weird. Um, My song was... Uh, Don't Stop Believing by Journey, which I feel like is a lot of people <laughs> song from what I hear. That, see, yeah. Basic, the, a basic choice. It um, seems like I like, a, the, the, I like is that song. A song? That seems like a weird song to do for graduation, because isn't it about like people who have really shitty lives, but they just have to I keep holding so. on because eventually they'll find each other and hope, uh, maybe? Isn't that yeah, like I, think the... that's, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, <laughs> seems but it, they say Detroit one time in the song, so everyone in, in the state loves it. Oh. But they say the word Detroit one time during oh. the song. So <laughs> also, people in Snoopy Rooms. Big fans, <laughs> specifically singers in Smoky Room. <laughs> they love the song, um, but uh, I was I was very very heavily campaigning to get uh, a Hall and Oates song. Picked. Oh my god, that would have been fucking and sweet. I, I, I lost, love Hall and Oates because people don't have taste. Yeah, what the hell, man? Hall and Oates is dope as fuck. I was campaigning like I was canvassing for a politician or something. Was, <laughs> yeah. I put a lot of effort into getting the song picked, and not. People were just like, what? I don't even know what that is, and I'm like, shame on you. Which Hall & Oates song? Um, I believe, uh... Oh shoot, what one was it? It was, uh... It was Maneater, just because it's a good song. <laughs> it should be Maneater. Oh, there she comes. Watch out, boy, she'll chew you up! Uh, That'd be a good graduation song. Uh, Van Plum says, My high school graduation song was uh, My Wish by Rascal Flatts, sung in all soprano by our choir. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that's great. That sounds, I don't know that song. Do you know that song off the top of your head? I don't. Like, I know okay. Rascal Flatts. I don't know Rascal Flatts. What kind of music are they? They're like weird, like, it's like country, but it's different. It's like poppy country oh interesting that's weird kind of like garth brooks kind of, but not that i actually know any garth brooks songs i just have like a song i have like a sound in my like a completely imagined sound in my head for what garth brooks's it's music like, actually sounds like they're a group um they look like Chris they, would be singing, they look like the group that would be like singing at your church um and they, I don't know. I'm not was a big Rascal Flatts fan. Okay. How did I don't you know feel? How to describe them even. 
How did you feel about Rascal, or how did or do you feel about Rascal Fat Flats Van Fleb? We're curious. We're dying to know. Did because... a monkey covering their ears as far as the choir singing it? Yeah, the choir, but that could be purely the choir is doing. Like first they of all, they didn't do the the, the the Rascal Flats justice. Uh, us Rascal heads know <laughs> that they deserve. No, better. no, no. You know what the Rascal Flats fan base is called? The little rascals. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. perfect. <laughs> right? I missed, it. I missed the opportunity there. Yeah. Shame on me. Um. <laughs> uh, what is a fucking rascal flat? Is that like where you can take your shitty scooter that you're riding around when you're in a Walmart? Like that's all a big rascal flat? <laughs> it's not. That's when uh, one of the tires on your shitty scooter goes that's flat. A, yeah. That's a <laughs> rascal flat. You're, Cause you just you you put too much pressure on it. I'm sorry, that's fat shaming, but <laughs> um. You didn't say that that was a bad thing they did that. You're just saying that. I'm just saying that they did know, that. Uh, Which physics exists. So physics exists, but uh, anyways. <laughs> um. Get off your freaking scooters. Anyways, <laughs> no. Um. But uh. I think the idea of having your school choir sing it, if they do well, is cool, because I would rather move, have a, I, I would I would rather have a live performance of my graduation song, than it played off like the song just played off of like a stereo system, you know, like if the band that's going to be performing it, it can do a good job, you know, with with high school bands, you know, it's really mm -hmm. <laughs> can go any way. Um, but like if you were like for instance like we did the birth sweet symphony like just play the song through a stereo or something like that but if we had a like people with actual violins playing that song while they, we were like uh graduating that would have been pretty cool but you know our school well, doesn't have that violin money no our school had, even... our school does, barely had money <laughs> so <laughs> van um, says uh not Rascal Flats is not my go-to, but Matt selected "Every Day" by Rascal Flats for our wedding song. So I'm a bad person, effectively. Oh no! This is the wedding I, I was at. Is and... Matt a little rascal? <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's a he's a rascal. <laughs> you kind of let us know. I gotta hear both of these songs then too, so I can let I can know if I'm a little rascal. Or not. <laughs> you might be. You just I don't know it yet. I don't know. Haven't heard a Rascal song. I haven't heard a Rascal Flat song I didn't like. But to be fair, I haven't heard a Rascal Flat song. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, That's pretty good numbers. That's a good. That's a good ratio. Unlike our drop frames count, which is now at 63, it's been dropping. Oh, it has been going goodness. down. So, um, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, Fuck it. <laughs> you hear that <laughs> internet connections? I don't give a shit. I'm not scared anymore. I'm not afraid of you. Um, and that's usually what they say right before they get just fucking murdered in movies, right? Like, isn't that what yeah. happens? Yeah. Well, that depends sometimes. on the kind of movie. Yeah. It depends on how annoying that character has been up until that moment. I feel like that's a very core. That's a correlation. Van Speaking Plum of, says, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it might be your new favorite old band. Might be my new favorite old band. That's right. I like that. It's an it's a gold noldy little ditty. Um, <laughs> that's a gold. I sing a gold noldy. I sing a gold noldy little ditty. Um, what is that from? It's from Balloon Shop. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, it, it, it's ringing a bell, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Yeah. Um. But uh, I. You know, we were talking about the room, and it has me wondering. You know, we've been we've been doing the bad movie night. We've been watching a lot of bad movies. Um, we gotta watch. We haven't done it in a little bit, though. We gotta watch some bad movies. But yeah, uh, yeah. do you have a favorite bad movie? Not necessarily that we have watched during bad movie night, but like mm -hmm. of bad movies that you have seen. Do you have has one like hit you in that spot where you're like, yes, this is the this is the pathos I have been seeking. I. You know, the bad movies thing, it's a fleeting experience. It's, they're not necessarily things you want to go back and watch all the time. So it's hard to say. The Room's great. Um, Speak for yourself. That one's rewatchable. Uh, I There's some that we watched that I just thoroughly enjoyed. Um, yeah. I, I actually ended up very yeah, unironically enjoying really 
Santa Slay. Enjoyable. Santa Slay was good. That what was, was pretty fun. Just said? Vampire's Kiss wasn't Vampire's that. Vampire's Kiss. Well, that's that, not even a bad movie. I think that's actually a very good movie. No, it is a good. That's what I'm saying. We we were watching and thinking it was going to be terrible, bad, and it was it was it was a great, was great. movie. I, I <laughs> enjoyed it a lot. A very, I will watch it again in the yeah. future. I don't know if we, I think we've already talked about it on this show, but uh, Van Fleb and anyone else who might be listening, go watch Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. It's truly enjoyable. It's, I thoroughly had a good time with it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was a good time. It was not what I expected in a good way. Yeah, I just realized I ended up giving this person, I was trying to give this person like a Christmas sweater, but it just sort of looks like, I gotta make this, these stripes blue, because it just sort of looks like a Captain America He's sweater. A He's patriotic, that one. Uh, it's Christmas morning. Time to put on my favorite red, white, and blue sweater. And go downstairs. Ah, yes. Christmas, the most American holiday. We invented it, so. That's true. I think we did. We, no, I mean, we When we say we invented it, it's like saying that... I don't know. It's like saying somebody invented some shit that they didn't, that they just, it's like, okay, it's like saying... We definitely didn't invent Christmas. No, we took like a million other different, like, traditions and just like jammed them together to make like a a fucking capitalist nightmare. I love Christmas though, because I like having time off from work and seeing my family, but that's... I like Christmas. It's a good time. Yeah. Um, No, I I enjoy... There are a lot of holidays that used to mean one thing, and I think over the years have just, like, taken on a secular, just sort of, like, general togetherness and, like, enjoying people you love vibe. Like, yeah. kind of taking, stripping it of its, like, original context. Like, that's kind of, like, what Thanksgiving is amongst, like, my family and my friends now. Um, and I enjoy that. I think that's cool. Um, because, like, that hol- that's the kind of holiday I can get behind. Like, religious holidays, whatever. I'm not religious, like... I can take them or leave them, but like, you know, uh, any chance for us to sit down and be like, hey, maybe let's try not to be shitty as much for like a couple days, you know, that's great. I just wholeheartedly support it. I, uh, I mean, haven't you seen all 1,000 of those Christmas movies where they get to the bottom of the meaning of Christmas and it's, it's, uh, you know, whatever it means to you. Yeah. Whatever you, if you enjoy it for whatever reasons, that's why it's fun. Hey, Charlie Brown, why don't you buck up, you little shit? Charlie it's Brown Christmas. needs antidepressants and some therapy. Charlie Brown needs a therapist and not Lucy. Even as, a, <laughs> even as a kid, that show bummed me out a little bit. In the comics, I'm just like, oh, man. The comics, like, the very early comics are, like, way more grim. <laughs> like, like, some of them are just, like... Some of, like, the original, like, I'm gonna draw an original Charlie Brown comic once we're done with this thing, actually. I think that'll be a lot okay. of fun. I'm gonna draw my own version of an original Charlie Brown. Like, not like an original, obviously, but like, you know, in the early years, because there was a cuter... I liked the art style more, to be honest, of early Charlie Brown. It was a little cuter. Made the, like, just bleak (laughs) Charlie Charlie Brown attitude that much more entertaining. And I think as Charles Schultz got more successful and happier, I think he just sort of (laughs) was not as bummed out, so he didn't write as depressing comics. Um, I can't speak. Also, I mean, can that sell forever to just be a kid that's clinically depressed? Fair, yeah. I mean, mean, Dennis the Menace Um, has been happening for a while, but... Kid's um, just an asshole. He's a menace. He's just a prick. (laughs) Dennis the literal villain. (laughs) (laughs) Poor Mr. Wilson's fucking property prices have tanked when they moved in next door and decided to have kids. Kid's a fucking menace! This kid's a fucking nightmare, oh my god. Did you hear how he pulled Miss Mabel's plug? <laughs> she died. She died. <laughs> he killed her. They, killed her. What are these parents doing? Watch your kid, he's, he's fucking with the neighbor all the time. Like... Fucking... Get a... He died. Get a, where the... Yeah, whatever, I don't know. We can, Dennis the we murderer. We can talk hours about Dennis the menace. Uh, all the shit he's will- done? What a menace to society. <laughs> yeah. Men- Dennis the menace to society. I want that crossover. <laughs> <Two minutes. laughs> um, what were we talking about just before? Oh yeah, uh, Charlie Brown. Um, and then and then his dog fantasizes about war. Yeah. 
about murdering Germans in war. <laughs> Which, to be fair, if you're gonna murder anybody, Germans during World War II, I feel like you can get the most leeway. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, you're allowed Awful. to. Oh, the only the ones who are like happy to be Nazis. Like you see a lot of war movies, like the more realistic ones, and there's a lot of Germans there who are just like, shit, man. I am in Germany and old enough to be in the army. My life fucking, I'm, I'm, my life fucking sucks. But then there are like the guys who are just like, ah, yes, I am very happy to be a Nazi, and those guys <laughs> go ham, like have at it. Yeah, you're you're allowed to, 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 you know, do whatever you want on screen to them. Yeah. So the Nazis are. So the only, only good thing Nazis ever did was uh, be Die. a very killable, <laughs> very killable yeah. thing on in movies and <laughs> stuff. Like the perfect. It's like yeah, Nazis they're, they're and zombies. Those are the two things you can get away with. Just do do whatever, man. Like we don't care. Yeah. And sometimes both at the same time. Yeah. That's why they combine them. They were just like the perfect villain that we can do whatever to. Don't feel bad. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna save this unless you want to add anything else to it. I have. I mean, unless we want to add shading, I don't. Okay, I'll do. I'll do one change. Don't. Don't save it yet. I'm gonna make one change. Oh, okay. I, sorry. No, that's fine. I wasn't saying that like I'm annoyed. Ah uh, yes, it is very good to be the evil guy, isn't it? Yes. What's that? Is that a knife over there? <laughs> Have you ever uh, seen Norm Macdonald's bit about uh, Germany and like? I mean, I feel like I've seen it. I know it's Norm McDonald bit, but it's, it's he does know. this one where he's saying like he's like I don't think Do the voice. Germany should get to be. A... Do the voice. <laughs> I don't want to. Do the voice. Uh, no. You have to be Norm Macdonald now. You yeah, have to. <laughs> Someone has to be. <laughs> you have to be <laughs> uh, he basically <laughs> he goes on to like say, uh, he's like I don't think Germany should get to be a country anymore because he's like uh, basically like the whole joke is he keeps saying like they in so and so year they decided to go to war with the world and then he, yeah. <laughs> he's like and then a few a few years pass and once again they go to war with who you might ask the world <laughs> the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. I don't know. He's good better bit. at telling it. You might guess. Uh, well, that's why you should have done the fucking voice. <laughs> that would have helped. It would have made it worse. Piece of shit. Um. Damn it. Damn it. Uh, I'm ready. I'm. I'm done. I did. I did what I wanted. To do. All right. You went and did it. Went and gone done did it. All right. All right. Let's see here. You know, what I just realized is I didn't make my bed. Hey folks, wanna peek? You wanna see how the sausage is made? Peek behind this pale guy. See his unmade bed? Look at that shit. Gross. Are you a bed maker? Tradition normally? No. <laughs> okay. I'm a slob. I, well, Excuse me, sir. Are, well, okay, some people feel very strongly I'm about trash. making bed. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Some people feel very strongly about bed making, and I hear it brought up a lot. How do you mean? Like, like. I, like like people like look at it like it's this like important task and if you like if you don't do it you are a slob or something like that I, I mean here's the thing I'll go make my bed right now and I'll show you what it takes to make a bed you see how the beds made folks this is this is a uh... <laughs> oh, I thought he was done there. I'm, I'm critiquing. Okay, so he doesn't do anything with the sheets. He just does the, the top. So you don't even. Oh my god! Look at your bed. With, it's so good. You don't even mess with the sheets. No. Okay. You, leave, like you can't. You can't see what's under that blanket. The sheets a mess under there. <laughs> the sheets are supposed to be a mess. They're like what you writhe around in and your dirty, sweaty <laughs> body at night. But, but when Fuck you get it. back in, you want it to be prepared for yourself, right? It is prepared. It's in the position that I got out of, so I just get back. It's like you. It's like a video. No, I'm with you. I don't. I don't make that very <laughs> yeah, often. I know. I know you're playing the devil's advocate. But. <laughs> I. Uh, I. If, maybe if there's somebody's gonna see it or something like that, that's a different story. But I don't really care that much. I, I've heard people use the analogy of like you don't tie your shoes when you take them off, type of thing. Like. What? 
Oh, like people who it's don't like, untie their shoes in. and just slip the shoes on, like with the, the string still well, tied? Well, I'm saying you don't. I, I'm equating making your bed to taking your shoes off your feet and then tying them. Okay, I see. So you take your shoes Not off. Not a very and good analogy. You tie them because you don't. There's no use anymore. I would say it's more like it's more like uh, parking your car. Uh, you know, like those people who would put the tennis balls in their garage, so they yes. park their car in like the maximum distance before like they like hit the wall or something like that. It's yes. like if you have one car and uh, th that's completely unrelated. I don't know. I have a better analogy. I've come up with a better metaphor. This, the, today's so episode is called raccoon, metaphors. Right? <laughs> raccoons. So see raccoons. You see. <laughs> It's like if you park your car, like if you have a two-car garage and you park, you have one car, and then you you like have all that space and you just make sure you always park very in the lines. It's like no one can see inside the garage. You have all that space. I don't just fucking park the car wherever in the garage. Like get cozy in there. This is a terrible metaphor. I don't know what I'm saying. It's nicer to crawl into a made bed. I'll it argue is. that. A made bed looks good. Like if you walk into a room, if you walk into a, like somebody's bedroom, they can have shit on the floor, and that'll look terrible. But if the bed is made, that jumps up the the level. Like it brings the room level up a few yeah. points. It, it, yeah. it makes and it measurable. And if people are gonna difference. see my room, the, that bed's made. I'll, I'll yeah. go that far. But people don't see my room that often. Yeah. Plus, if you don't make your bed, then people can see all the pee in it. You know. <laughs> well, I just snatch. <laughs> I just keep my sheets. Uh, I, I, I bought these custom face. sheets that are the color of piss and shit. Sorry, I tried to keep and... a straight face to say. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> keep, 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 at and yes, endings me. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Well, Did you oh, hear that? Let me just get a. Yeah, I heard it, but I didn't see the alert. I see it. Sammy Mama uh, just became our new best friend. Hey. Um, hey, welcome, thank you, Sammy welcome. Mama. Right at the perfect moment. Yeah. <laughs> talking about pissing the bed. Um, uh, <laughs> could you just imagine you were having that conversation with somebody, like, just talking about, like, making your bed, and then they'd, like, ser like, it's like you find out something terrible about somebody innocuously like they don't realize that what they're saying is actually something that they should admit to nobody it's like yeah like the worst part about my bed is all the pee in it you know i don't know i'm, I'm was, now i'm just saying my joke over yeah. and over again sandy I mama subscribed oh my god oh my gosh what what wow. are you doing Thanks. with your money you don't even know us <laughs> thank you my goodness i i would wage you to say you're doing the right thing and i appreciate, <laughs> appreciate it. it yeah uh, are you drawing an early Peanuts too? Because that's what I'm about to do. I don't remember. I don't. I'm doing this from memory. I mean, he's a fairly simple drawing, but I don't know the exact details. Is that his hair on the top of his head? What is? What's the little? I'm swirl? assuming that's like his his hair. It's interesting. How does like, that? It's implied hair. Or maybe he's what just fucking translate? bald. As a child. Uh, Sammy Mama says uh, they know uh, Van Pleb. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. I've seen Sammy Mama in Matt's streams before, so that, that makes oh, sense. Nice. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us and for supporting us. We appreciate it. We're sorry yeah, we're we... dropping 69.8% of the frames that are uh, on the stream. Apparently. Yeah, we're having some technical difficulties, but we're powering through it. Uh, yeah. You know, if you do come back, and we hope you do, it should be better in the future. We're working on it. Yeah, we're, we're trying to figure out what the hell that is about. Why it's, it only happens when I'm streaming to Drawbomb though, so it's got to be something with my stream settings. Is is my assumption? Like it's just, it's, it's weird, you know. Um, what would what would Charles Brown's hair look like if he were a real person? That's my question. <laughs> I've seen a lot of interpretations of it, and I can't get out of my head having just like all bald and like a just an annoying tuft of hair in the front. Um, yeah. I like to imagine he grew up with an afro. <laughs> he finally got hair later on in life. Yeah. His male pattern baldness. That's uh, correct. Alright. It was what early onset. Throw? Postnatal. <laughs> Actually just post -natal all of life hair. Is Isn't all hair postnatal? Well, <laughs> all no, of life is postnatal. <laughs> Very true. Well, are you... 
Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. I need to look up Charlie Brown. It's, he, he, I, I really love the way the characters look in early Charlie Brown. It's super cute. Um, it's more simple. It's less like... Uh, I like later Charlie Brown, like that we know nowadays. I think feels kind of more corporate. Um, oh yeah. Now, now okay. I'm just being like a fucking wow. hipster though about Charlie Brown. I guess. The original is. It's funny. It like looks. Completely very different, different though. Yeah. And I like it though. I like I like the way it looks. It's kind of. It's got a lot of personality. But I, I like the style that it grew into as well, actually. Yeah, I, I, think I don't know what, which I prefer. I, I like the new style. I do like the old style, I think. And that's just out of a pure aesthetic thing. Um, just because I kind of, it kind of, I just get like a little bit more out of it looking at it. But um, that's not to say that it's the correct style or it's the better style. That's just, I just, you know, I get more dopamine out of looking at the old Charlie Brown. You're allowed to like it. <laughs> oh no, I drew his bangs too. Too low. <laughs> you know what you know what old Charlie Brown kinda looks like? It looks like Pip Boy from Fallout. Yeah. It's interesting how and this is true for like a lot of artists, but it's interesting how there's certain features on the original Charlie Brown that are better drawn, like from a, like, not not necessarily, uh, you know, what what is better drawn, but I mean like like the hands and stuff are like there's more detail in them, yeah, than what it grew to, yeah, <clears throat> like you can see like a little bit more. They had all five fingers. Pretty sure that eventually they, they devolved into four fingers. He's like, look, I have to make a new one of these comics every fucking day for the <laughs> yeah. newspaper. Are you? I can't kidding? be drawing all these fingers. Are you serious? What? What was? What do you always say? It's always I don't know, like, damn it. My gosh. <laughs> no, he said good grief. Oh yeah, good grief. That was it. Boy, uh, the, those Schultzes are making a lot of money off of off of old Charles. Off of old like, Charlie. To this day. That that shit always kind of weirds me out. Is um just hearing about all like the estates of like these really famous artists and like what the family has done, but, like with the estate since. Because almost every situation is I see them just doing shit. <laughs> like terrible things like uh, the, the estate of Marvin Gaye suing like I mean look that I wasn't a fan of that do? Blurred Lines song but uh, the Marvin Gaye estate did sue the guy for using a drum beat that sounded like the Blurred Lines song and uh, they won and it was like huh. kind of wild because musicians were kind of like um, excuse me you can't you can't copyright a drum pattern like yeah. <laughs> there's only Drums. so many <laughs> The interest in instrument sounds this way. That's <laughs> yeah, like what it sounds like. So like a lot musicians were like for a while and might still be. I mean, at large, I don't know the overall consensus, but you know, it's like what the uh, how is that gonna fuck our lives up? Because you know, we can't use a drum beat if it sounds like Marvin Gaye's drum beats anymore. I guess or anyone else's that opens up Pandora's box so bad. Uh, yeah, that's that's a weird, a weird thing. Yeah, in the estate of, uh, or like, <clears throat> at least, uh, who's the guy who voiced Shaggy in Scooby Doo? Um, Casey Kasem. It was Casey Kasem. Yeah, and uh, his his fucking kids <laughs> were awful, <laughs> like up until his death, and uh, were just like abusing the shit out of him and exploiting him, um, and his like sort of lack of memory by like towards the end of his life and so like you know all these people who are just like his the next in his family or, or in Not like of all these musicians kids. who are just being like shitty with like this just that vast wealth amassed by somebody who they just happen to be related to 
money makes people crazy. Money does make people crazy. Um. What was I going to say? I don't know. Uh. Yeah, the Charlie Brown stuff now is like it's weird the, the stuff that gets put on just like it's like yeah it's a dude it's like band aids just Charlie Brown on it and it's like yeah like I guess maybe that one you'd be like oh they're kids but uh, I I don't that was a weird example but they're just like like mustard has Charlie Brown like just weird things they'll just put mustard I don't know I, that's what I'm saying it's just like they he's used as like a a logo on like I feel like just random shit all over the place. Maybe not specifically mustard, but it's just weird marketing. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah, everybody knows Charlie Brown. Just put him on, put him on everything. Put him on so, mustard. Yeah, put him on. Uh, you put him on your goddamn coffin. I don't fucking care. Then you got you got Bill Watterson, a man of integrity, man of substance. <laughs> I mean, Hopefully, I think Charles Schultz. He's able to. I think Charles Schultz is a pretty... Yeah, no, he, I'm not trying to shit that. He had integrity. Charles Schultz. No, I know. Uh, Rick Tor but Rick Bill Watterson had Charles integrity. Schultz. Like, we can at least say that without... More than I would have. I would have yes, sold out at least a little. I would have sold the fuck out. I would have made out. some stuffed animals and shit. Yeah. I would have tried to collect on all this Kelvin peen on things. Bumper, <laughs> I would have definitely stickers. sued somebody. Yeah. I think that's just like a case of like... When you're an artist and all of a sudden you just see somebody like selling it on like a mug online and you're just like, oh, okay, I guess I'll tell them to stop. But I don't know how to actually make them stop. Yeah. There's, I think there's so many of those stickers and they're so easy to make that it's just like. Yeah. It's, not even it's tough. Like you see about a lot of uh, online artists who like they get their shit stolen and then like just random websites start selling their designs out on like t-shirts and stuff like that and like there's so many hoops they have to jump through just to like put a stop to that and like you know I've, it's so I've easy to mass produce shit before. before and you know a lot of the places were like overseas so it's like what am i gonna do if they say fuck you no yeah i'm not gonna go get a lawyer yeah they don't have like extradition <laughs> for like petty lawsuits in Thailand or whatever, like to America. Right. I don't, I don't think they'll do that. Hey, can I arrange you guys to bring over the T-shirt makers so that I can sue them for stealing my design? Um, and it's like yeah, a, it's, I, I don't know. It's a hard yeah. thing to deal with. It's also weird because I know that like there's also a huge market for like original designs, but based on copywritten properties. Like you see so many like cust like I have a custom. Not custom, but I have like a... Uh, uh, wow, we were dropping crazy frames. There we go. We're back. Uh, we'll see how much they heard of me. But uh, I have a t-shirt that is like... It's got like two Death Stars and it has like the dates on like when the movies came out. And it says like never forget because like they blew up the Death Stars and it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and like that's not an official Star Wars shirt. But that's definitely a no, shirt I paid... No, they don't paid. do 9-11 jokes. <laughs> no. They're official. But that's definitely a shirt I paid money for, and was right. sold at a at a Comic Con, <laughs> like an official comic book like event where Star Wars was like showing shit off. I'm sure. It um, gets interesting when it gets into like fan art type stuff. Yeah, but like yeah, like if and especially like fan art that you don't sell. Like I get like whatever, fine, can't stop that. But fan art that you do sell. So many people make a living off of that, and I'm just like, yeah. aren't you like under the gun of Disney, like at a moment's notice? I think when something, I don't know exactly how it works, but I think when something's that big, it's it's like you almost want that to happen because it's advertising itself and it's keeping it like a cultural, keeping it like in the zeitgeist, so, like keeping it like culturally relevant. I don't know, but but yeah, like Star Wars shit. There's Star Wars art everywhere. Yeah, made ninety percent of it's not made by Disney well, or and Lucas Film. I, I especially expect a crackdown uh, now that Disney has control of like the Star Wars property because like Disney's like known for suing like daycares who just paint like Mickey Mouse on their daycare and they're like, hey, you can't fucking paint Mickey Mouse on your damn daycare. Like, 
take that shit down or burn it down. Like Disney's had done that. Like they were. They that burned was like, down a lot of daycares with kids they, in it. Disney's they burned down ruthless. A lot of daycares killed a lot of kids and parents. But um, yeah. Uh, so I imagine Disney. I mean, Disney has had the property for a while, and I don't. I haven't heard like any crazy like whoa Disney shut down blah 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 for having Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader but I don't know it, it all gets very hair it's like cuz copyright gets very weird or like trademarks when it comes to like that sort of stuff though like Sony keeps making like new spider-man movies because if they don't they lose the rights to spider-man so they just keep that's why they kept, they've like done like 18 reboots of spider-man <laughs> and like <laughs> when minecraft was so making dumb. that it's so dumb when minecraft was making that scrolls game they were making a game or like minecraft like notch or whoever maybe the people who were just at mojang were trying to make that scrolls game and then uh bethesda had to sue them because of their elder scrolls series and uh it, it was like even be, like the guys at bethesda were like we don't even like care it's our lawyers if we don't protect our ip like if we don't sue like even if we don't win if we don't sue then we lose we potentially lose the rights to using the name the elder scrolls for our series like it all gets really muddled and, and i don't even know if that's fucking true maybe that was just them lying through their teeth so they could be like yeah fuck it ha 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 we, su we sued them but we're not the bad guys. I don't know. But oh, all that shit gets so hairy. The laws are kind of muddy. Yeah. It's almost like they're intentionally vague, so you have to hire somebody who's an expert in all of that stuff to, uh, like that. to, uh, you know, do it. It's like taxes. But anyways, um, copyright's weird. And Disney also has, like, <laughs> copyrights that forever like they'll never lose their copyrights and they've also been like the com like the reason that like copyright is like 80 years or like the reason that things go on public domain like 80 years after the original author's death and then like some other parameter is because Disney's like sued constantly to keep all their old ass movies like under their control um that's and then that's also ruined copyright in the country, in my opinion. I've read a number of, like, there's a couple of books that I talk about animation and stuff, and, like, they all have had, like, a segment devoted to, like, talking about Disney fucking with copyright. Old Disney. Uh, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna be in charge of the world one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be Disney and China, and they'll both own everything. And when a scarred wasteland. Full of holes and smoke. But holes anyways, and smoke, you say? Holes and smoke. So, oh my gosh. Boy, that sounds... I, I love like holes that. and I love smoke. Sign <laughs> me you're, up. You're always, you're, you're always going on about holes and smoke. Sign me up for your dystopian uh, wasteland. We're talking about Disney's Shia LaBeouf film Holes, right? That's correct. Um, you know that peach. That what was the name of the peach drink that they like <laughs> killed people over? <laughs> Wait, is that what you think happens in that? No, it's been a while since I've read that book and watched it. <laughs> but there is like a there uh, is like a whole plot point based around like a peach cobbler recipe oh, I'm not sure that it. I remember this there's a lizard that kills you and like there's a lizard that if it yes. bites you or licks you you die in like five seconds because of the poison and yeah, then there's, there's, a, there's a lizard and then there's a secret stash of like peach cobblers in a jar or something that they eat as well that's like a secret recipe I'm not making this up yeah. I swear Stanley Yelnats okay Stanley Yelnats I don't know why I said Stanley Yelnats just now. It's forwards back and backwards. It's a palindrome. That's his name. I'm gonna look this up real quick. Okay. We need to know about those peaches right away. It's called Sploosh in the in the story. Yes. I do recall that now. Um. 
Sploosh so that's is at the end of the movie, right? That's how they get. That's how they get rich. I think uh, Kiss and Kate Barlow's famous spiced peaches that is fermented over a hundred years and sealed in tight glass jars. I think he used it as a weapon at one point. Because like it's like so pressurized, doesn't he like use it to cause a distraction? This. I don't think so, but I remember the sploosh. <laughs> uh, wait, so it's. Say it one more time, it's fermented peaches? It's fermented, fermented peaches. Product. They're uh, kids, they should not be drinking this. That's very high alcohol not. content. Um, too much sploosh caused Zero to get sick. Okay. Um, man, that book yeah, went sure. fucking places, man. <laughs> like, you don't, you don't think about it. I... You don't, I you don't think about I've it. I've seen the movie, I don't remember much of it. I remember details. There it's, were holes in it, I recall. Is that is that true? There they are holes. holes. Do you know how big the holes were? Was it like six foot by six foot? Something like that, yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> Quit. More more holes trivia. Quiz me. Uh, what did Stanley go to the holes jail for? Because he, he stole. No, no, he didn't. He he thought he he got. Framed for stealing some shoesies. God he didn't actually right. steal them, though. Nailed it. Um, what is uh, who played Stanley Elnatz's dad in the movie? Henry Winkler. Damn, yeah, I was expecting to throw you off with that one. Oh, you can't throw me off. I know played, everything about holes. Who played Stanley Elnatz? Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Trialobuf. Um. That's it. That's all the trivia I got for you. Okay, that's, that's all I want to do. Okay. Uh, uh, this drawing, I, I'm gonna. I, not. You've been drawing. redoing it like over and over. You've been struggling. And it's not even good in the end. You know, I get talking about holes and I just. I can't focus. I get all excited about, about Stanley Yelnats, Trials it's and Tribulations. Kind of drums. And yellow spot. That movie really. I mean, that book really does go places, though. There's fucking treasure. There's lizards that do ca killed you and do kill some people. There's a fucking yep. mountain that they climb with like mystical stuff at the top of it. There's a onions. fucking. There's a ton of shit. There's onions. There's, there's onions at the top of the mountain, and that eat the onions. The the lizards don't want to kill you. See, I don't even remember that shit. <laughs> That's uh, you're filling in the gaps of my memory now. Um, and this arm looks awful. I need to fix this. This whole silhouette. Oh is yeah, that's fucked. what they're trying to. They're trying to dig up treasure, and they end up digging up the peaches. I think, like, yeah, like, isn't the treasure the peaches? Like, that's what they've been. They like, the wardens have been looking for. It the is, whole time. but they didn't know that. They didn't know that, but like the the what you find out by the end of the book. St spoilers, by the way, for the mo movie and book holes. But... <laughs> We're ruining all. There's somebody in the middle of holes right now watching this. And you're like, oh, fuck, man! <laughs> Ruined holes. I just started this. <laughs> <laughs> I got holes for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were were they looking for the peach recipe? Is that like or the peaches that have been fermented for a hundred years? Is that what they were? No, or is, I was think, it an actual treasure? I think they, they were fa there was a fabled treasure that they knew was somewhere. They didn't know what it was. Oh, and it was the peaches. Uh, and it ended up just being peaches. And they're all like, What? They can't just the peaches And it was. Honestly, this conversation makes me kind of want to read that book again, or see the movie at least. You know, whichever's faster. I'm sure yeah. it's like a book an adult could finish in like an afternoon. Probably. Um, I think the movie's decent. I don't know. I, I think the movie you could probably yeah. finish in an afternoon. I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I don't think so. Um, that's that's the number one. Like, some people are just like, why don't people read book no more? Why don't why don't why do they watch movie? And it's like, dog can finish a movie in like two hours <laughs> like this right workday up. world i've been reading so i hear you paint houses all year it's forever it's not even a long book i just can't get that be asked sorry uh what were you saying before uh no i was agreeing with you um yeah i i i like books but uh take time i do take time i do like a good book though like when i read a good book i like I need to read it. some more. 
I, Me too. Or, or even, or maybe like even like listen to some books on tape. I like that too. I'm like doing stuff that I can't actually. Yeah, it's kind of like a podcast. Take the time. Yeah, exactly. Nice while while you're working to listen to something instead of just the screams that echo and repeat in my head. I try to drown them out with a little Harry Potter book on tape. That's right. And so, Harry Potter asked Hagrid, Why are you so big, you big man? And Hagrid was like, You can't ask that. <laughs> you That's piece so of rude. shit, Harry. I'll fucking kill you. I should have left you with your N, Uncle. I'll put you right back under those fucking stairs. I'll turn you into a magical set of stairs and walk up and down. You are fucking. Did you know that Hagrid has a uh, very uh, uh, deadly peanut allergy? (laughs) Is that like the actor or the character? The character. Oh, did J.K. Rowling tell this, like, years after the book <laughs> Yeah, books it's not in the out? books. It's not in the books. Uh, she just tweeted it in between uh, uh. Uh, slurs about the trans community. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. it's canon now. She was like, here's a couple slurs. Hagrid's allergic to peanuts. A couple more slurs. Yeah. Ron uh, has uh, an extra tell. Yeah. They're just added uh, in post. Yeah. A little bit of retconning going on. Uh, so, I, I I almost if thank God J.K. Rowling didn't have any involvement in the movies aside from like you know having the books uh, that the movies are based off of because she would probably go back like George Lucas and like make edits re-edit and them. things like that like yeah. re edits like there'd be just a scene where just. Dumbledore just looks at the screen and he's like, I'm gay, by the way, and then they just edit that into the middle. Yeah. Because that was another one that she did. Yeah. Dumbledore's gay. Uh, Dumbledore's I didn't well, write it in any of the books. I think, just like, yeah. That's where we were getting it the is. joke from originally. Yeah. It is. Although I feel like there was, um, there was like, a, an official or, like, semi-official, like, Harry Potter account that was just, like, fun wizard facts. And one of them was just, like, wizards don't use bathrooms. They fucking shit their robes and then magic it away. And everyone was just, like, on Twitter and they were, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I delete wait, this post. Was that real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it happened. It was official? I, th- I don't know how official it was. I think it was, like, semi-official or something like that. Like, it was... I need it to either find ha- it had a large following uh, uh, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, look it up. I'm I curious. Love. Who gets to decide what's canon? That's a great question. Whoever controls the purse strings. That's true. All right, let's see here. <laughs> yes, Harry- this is a Vice article. Yes, Harry Potter wizards shit their pants. It's canon. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I'm so glad I could tell you about this story that you weren't aware. <laughs> I watched it happen in real time. I don't know how, but I saw it. Thanks to Pottermore, the digital publishing, e-commerce, entertainment, and news company from Harry Potter, we know that uh, Harry Potter universe wizards shat their pants on the regular until the 18th century. It says, Hogwarts didn't always have bathrooms. Before adopting muggle plumbing methods in the 18th century, wizards and wi- Witches and wizards simply relieved themselves wherever they stood and vanished the evidence. Why? And it's, and it's the official. <laughs> this, this is great. I love this. I'm so glad why? you didn't know Why did they do before. this? I don't know why they did this. All the like reaction tweets were just like, please delete this. <laughs> why did you tell us this? <laughs> oh god, I, I need to dig into this further later on. I'm. Uh. They, so wait. Did the shit on the. Did, I don't know, they, man. I have lots of logistical questions. I think questions they shit their them. robes. Did you, did you see what the actual tweet said? Did they show, like, the screenshot of the actual tweet? That was the, the, the actual one I read. The tweet? 
Yeah, yeah. They simply relieved themselves wherever they stood and vanished the evidence. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that was the actual tweet you were reading and not, like, someone's synopsis. But those, that's canon. That's... Wow. Harry Potter. Wiz so guess what? This is tweeted from Wizarding World, the official home of Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. Um... So, so yeah. that's that conversation we were having before about peeing the bed. If we were wizards, it wouldn't even be a fucking embarrassing issue at all. No, it'd be, it'd be normal. It'd be normal. They say um, that serial killers, you would pee the bed a lot. Like, maybe they didn't know Voldemort was a serial killer because he just kept vanishing the piss out of his bed. Where did... Where does it go? It goes to the piss dimension. <laughs> The piss and shit dimension. Huh. Well, that's something. I did not know that. And now I do. And I can never not know that. Uh, <laughs> ever again. Can't believe you didn't know that. I thought that that was... Uh, you need to I immediately mean, go tell Morgan as soon as this is over. Yeah, you, I can't I wait. I, 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 almost, I almost want you to videotape her reaction and send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be similar to how mine was. Yeah, I think so. It's wild. You know, there's not a need for some of these things that they they invent. Most of them, in fact. Um, it's, it's strange. I, I mean, that, I'm 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 very happy they wrote that. <laughs> yeah, me uh, too. But I don't know why they ever would. Especially something that's still making them money actively. <laughs> Is it, though? I, I guess they have a movie. Aren't they still statement. making movies? Well, I hear, like, the last one was a terrible failure or something like that. Oh. Maybe not. Maybe I could be wrong. I mean, it's Harry Potter. I'd be surprised if it was a fantastic failure. And where to find him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw the first one, and I did not think it was very good. Yeah, it's, that's the general consensus I heard. This looks like it made... It didn't make, like, a shit ton of... It didn't make, like, Marvel money. But it made, uh, it made like a hundred thousand. Like, so their budget is two hundred million. Assuming that their advertising budget is double, you know, is the same amount as their budget. Like a lot of times, is that a separate take, thing? I always assumed that that was just part of the budget. I think. Let me just check real quick. Um, they don't. They don't specify. But like, whatever the movie's production budget was. The advertising budget is usually like the same amount like they just you know you double the amount and that's the overall cost so i'm trying to see if they specify development budget well, let's see against a production but it says a production budget of 200 million so a production budget is before advertising i'm pretty sure so technically we could specify we could surmise that they maybe get yeah, that's the third time i've used surmise today i should but anyways, uh, we can sort of extrapolate that uh, wow. 200 million becomes 400 million with the advertising. If they made 60, 650 million, basically, then they made essentially 150 million profit, which is a lot of money to us. But movie companies are generally like, uh, what the fuck? Um, but it was the 10th highest grossing film of 2018, but the lowest grossing installment of the Wizarding World franchise. This is all very interesting stuff, I know. It, it, it is. I was dying to know. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. okay. We have a third one in production and two more on the way after that, so wow. My gosh. So there's, I mean, I think if you make 100 million, like, it's profit in the end. I guess you want more profit. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, it's it's a lot of money for us, but, like, movie companies are, like, nowadays, they're like, if we don't make half a billion, like, was it even worth it? You're muted. Sorry, I was once again muted for you and not for the stream, because I sneezed. Um, oh, sorry, I keep forgetting that. No, it's okay, I want you to talk, because I want you to be able to hear me. Um, I was enjoying the, the goddamn peace and quiet. That's, I'm so sorry. That's all. thought you could get it a word in edgewise for once. Well, not on my watch. <laughs> Well, I just interrupt you all the time. That's my tech. What? No, I, I'm the interrupter. You're the okay, guy good. who really gets in that way. way. I do it often. No, you don't. We, well, the thing is, I, I feel like we did one episode where we were in person. 
And I feel like fat episode. We didn't least interrupt interrupted one. <laughs> yeah. Because there's no that like, latency. Sense. You see, I, I like to blame latency, but the truth is, I just I have a thing I want to say, so I'm just gonna just talk over you. That's what my. Then you know you want to be the uh, first person. <laughs> good social technique uh, your friends will love it oh yeah. yeah makes it feel like they're part of a conversation and not at all like they're at a TED talk <laughs> people love when you when you're having a conversation with them people love to feel like that their involvement is purely happenstance and that really they're just listening to some guy just talk that's everyone's favorite everyone yeah. loves to be presented to and not to be part of an actual human conversation Exactly, exactly. So, Ian, are you excited for Christmas time? Um, eh. Sure. You excited for the Christmas times that are coming your way? I mean, f t to me, time makes no difference right now. Have <laughs> um, you been a good boy this year? Oh gosh, Santa Claus is gonna give me so much fucking coal. Oh no. Well, I mean... I asked for coal. sell coal or use coal. I asked for coal, I need it for my Steam ship. Oh. So you've been a good boy, is what you're saying? Uh, well, <laughs> I think I've sort of, I've gamed the system here. I, I went oh. either way. So you here's the thing: bad. if I ask for coal, and I'm a bad boy, maybe he'll give me presents. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't lose. I can't lose. You need, you need coal. I need the coal. And if he'll give you that, or he won't. Give me that coal. Wow. I need that coal. You're, you're, you're a genius. I'm a smart guy. So I finished my, uh, my comic, by the way. Oh. Okay, so, let's talk about that. Um... I'll let you read it. I want you to read it out loud to me. Alright. <laughs> Eat shit, Charlie Brown. Fuck you. Uh... <laughs> that's just, that's an old Charlie Brown comic. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Um... <laughs> You're that's not old, wrong. That's what old Charlie Brown comics were like. That's true. Um, they're brutal. Uh, you know. He's, Charlie Brown's not having the best of times. No, people... People seem to have issues with him. You know, it's just like... Charlie Brown, your, your mental unwellness is making me uncomfortable. Can you not do that near me, please? Here, now I've made it legit. <laughs> Check it out in the bo <laughs> in the bottom right of the comic. <laughs> oh shit! Wow, I didn't know this was an official Schultz comic. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> you got his signature and everything. <laughs> That's all it takes. Yep. <laughs> wow. You're gonna be sued. I know. Charlie Brown should see a therapist and uh, a legit one. Yeah, Lucy doesn't. I don't know if that she. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that she has the the training. Yeah, I feel like she'd be a bad therapist. Um, I don't know where she went, where she got her license. From cardboard box, she probably got probably got it from Snoopy. I feel like Snoopy would be her trainer. Yeah, Snoopy is like would be some weird arc. like reincarnation of <laughs> many people, many lives lived. Yeah. Stuck in the body of a dog. Um, yeah, I don't know, Snoopy's like a weird sidekick thing. It's we it's weird because like Snoopy's a dog, Peanuts is a comic about like a bunch of human characters, but like when I think of the comics, I want to call him Snoopy, the fucking hey, dog. Hey, you read the newest Snoopies? Hey, this is, this... the new Snoopy yeah. movie. It's like what the fuck? He's the fucking he's the dog. He doesn't even have lines. The the children all have dialogue, but the dog doesn't say shit. I don't I don't think the dog even gets thought bubbles, right? Does the dog get thought bubbles? Uh, Snoopy. I, th I think he does yeah, when he's like yeah, his yeah, fighter pilot character, but I think he emotes mainly. He definitely doesn't talk in the in the in cartoons. You like. It's like, blah, 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 blah. It just, blah. Blah. it's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I looked it up and Snoopy does have thought bubbles. That's an aspect that the movies have never touched upon, I don't think, is Snoopy's inner monologue. <clears throat> it's true. What's what's going on up in that head of his? That the old, the old Snoop, Snoop head. If there's head anything head. I've wanted to know, it's what's going on in the mind of a dog. World, they're nature's dumbest animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, you know, he's thinking about war. That's and true. He yeah, he's thinking about the bird. He's uh, just thinking about like the old days of combat. Like his PTSD kicks in. Yeah, he's been reincarnated. Uh, he used to be a fighter pilot. Uh, now he just fantasizes about war and shooting people with a. Uh, machine gun mounted on an airplane. You think you and I imagine I've seen hell. <laughs> I lived it. I've lived it. I ate it. I smelled it every day. You don't know hell till you've warmed yourself with another man's guts. <laughs> Slept in him like a sleeping bag. Slept in him for warmth in a cold Russian winter. You crash land. You gotta use broken bones to cut your ropes. Have you ever scalped a Nazi? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've scalped 15. <laughs> Snoopy graphic novel. It's much grittier. Yeah, there's so gotta be a Schultz gritty is more uh, risky work, but uh, critics, I would think, would agree it was a it was an achievement. Call it cashews, cause it tastes good too, but it goes down a little rougher. Are cashews a little? Are cashews more? Uh, do they have more texture on them the, that they go down rougher? Not really. <laughs> I made it all up. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. <laughs> Sounded good though. Yeah, I thought it was clever, so I went with it. That's how most snake oil salesmen get their, you know, make their bag. This this lie. Why? Fuck it. Ian, shit. we're getting near the end of the yeah. show. Do you have anything you'd like to plug? Gosh, you know, I uh, <clears throat> I have to I have to think about that. I guess <laughs> um, I'd like to plug a little show called Draw Bomb. You know, what? I'm gonna take a. We're not ready for the outro yet because I haven't. I, ha I turned our cameras off for that, but I should keep them on. But anyways, oh, okay. <clears throat> um, it's back. We'll we'll get to that later. But anyways. What was I saying? I want to plug Draw Bomb. 8 p.m. Mondays, unless it turns out my fucking internet is terrible at that point consistently. In which case... Yeah, we'll we work will. on getting that sorted out a little bit. Maybe we'll... We always say we're going to, but we always forget to. Even though we, like, talk quite a bit during the week, we <laughs> never get stuff ready. Like... We never know, sit down and have, like, a session. Yeah, so we should, we should do that and work out some kinks. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna check something too, but when the stream is over, I'm just gonna try streaming to my own, the other channel, like a little bit, see if it's truly the settings or if it's the internet. I feel like that'll be a good okay. test, since you know, still yeah. seeing the drop frames, but like kind of evening out though. But I still get the red bars occasionally. I don't know. I'll take a look. See, whatever. Well, this is for off stream. Point is, draw bomb 8 p.m. is a train wreck every week. Come watch us train wreck. We're gonna get this thing figured out one day. Or we'll try to build a house out of trash. <laughs> like like the raccoons do. Like a raccoon. I had a, I, I said train wreck and I felt like I had to bring it full circle. I'm sorry. You were saying something. Glad I cut you, you off again. Glad you did. Oh no, I I wasn't. You were you were plugging plugging draw bomb. Well, you were saying something about the plug of draw bomb, and then I I started saying the trash thing. It's a good no, show. You go first. Go watch it, and we're gonna yeah. we're gonna figure out our kinks, and this show will run good one day. I swear, we're trying maybe, so hard. Maybe when we get to episode 200. Yeah, maybe we'll have it finally solved by then. We should figure out something to do for for the 100th oh, episode. We should talk to Many Hats, Matt, see if we can get him to get that D&D &D campaign thing set up That'd for them. That'd be cool. That would be a lot of fun to do, I think. Yeah. That would be cool. Uh, be I don't cool. have anything to plug because you took my thing to plug. Um, oh, but, no. uh Thanks for tuning in, Van Pleb. Thanks for uh, tuning in for the first time. 
Sammy Mama and subscribing. We appreciate bag. you. Oh yeah, paper bag. Um, well, we have ornaments out. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, if you bought, bought them now, they probably wouldn't get to you Christmas. But hey, if we make it to Christmas <laughs> next year, you'll be ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's something worth checking out. Worth, yeah. Uh, paper bag Creative Co. Check us out on Etsy or Instagram. Find us Please there. Please do. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Okay, well, I'm gonna start playing the outro song. I'm I need to add our portraits back in, but we're gonna be missing once the song starts. That's so just as a heads up. That we can leave them with the memory of not our fate. Can they still hear us? Yeah, they can still hear us. They can oh, okay. hear the song. They just can't see gotcha. us. Well, then we'll leave them with a good memory of you know yeah. of the show. They don't have to look at our faces. So, you know, uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, y'all are lovely people. I don't know what else to say. You're all great. God bless. God yeah, thanks bless for uh, sticking with us through our technical difficulties. Man Plus yes. says, good show, you guys. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to work out some of the kinks. And we'll be back next week, maybe, probably, maybe. Uh, do you have any... Christmas stuff that's gonna get in the way of that. No, no, no Christmas stuff should be getting in the way, so we should be good with that. I, yeah, I probably would be good too. I okay. Be. I mean, if it's not, I totally understand. You know. Yeah, I'll let you, I'll let everybody know if that happens. Um, yeah. In the meantime, uh, remember, uh, wizards shit their pants. It's canon. <laughs> wizards shit their pants. It's canon. As you're watching Harry Potter, know that half the people in the scene have shit in their pants. That's correct. They have shit in their pants, and it's nasty. Do they vanish it away, like, as it's coming out of their butt? Can they vanish it when it's inside them, or do they have in to the shit colon? their pants? That's yeah. the thing. If you're gonna, if they're gonna tell us that, like, just tell us they vanish the poop out of their organ, like their colon, like, their uh, small intestine. That would make way more sense. Yeah. That would be way less, like, disgusting a visual. Still not Maybe? necessary. Maybe this whole magic thing really breaks down once we really start to examine the, <laughs> <laughs> the minutia of it. I don't know. Uh, you know, well, I need uh, very detailed explanations of how the magic works and how they go about it, or else I cannot, I just can't suspend my disbelief any further enough to read these books. I need more wizard poop facts. <laughs> <laughs> Give me those wizard poop facts. I need the knowledge. They have toilets at the school, so like they they've got they've gotten to the point now where they know, they're like that was fucked up, right, guys? Let's not do that anymore. Hey, can we Remember stop shooting our pants for ropes? hundreds of years? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the humans have a way better way. It's not magic, but it works just fine. We have other things here that they use, like we have floors, we have like stairs. Like yeah. we didn't completely throw everything out of the window. We can we don't have to magic away our shits. Yeah, and it's it's funny because in the books they're like, well, they have a they have guns which are like these wands that you use to kill people, and it's just like how you guys have heard of guns before, like wizards, like the amount of separation between the wizard world and the human world is dumb because it's just like you guys can get the concept of a gun. Like by the end by the end of the seventh movie, you're all shooting lasers at each other out of your wands like it's a fucking Star Wars movie. Like you guys know what guns are. I'm not sure a bullet would kill a wizard in the same way. Maybe if it, like hit them no, in the head. They're humans. <laughs> it would. Well, I know, but but like, there's multiple scenes where like somebody gets like the equivalent of like getting hit by a bus, and then they're like, they're like, I have a kazam, and then there's other bones like fix up and stuff like that. Well, yeah, but like they have to still be alive. Like if you get shot yeah. in the head with a gun, like <laughs> you're done. <laughs> You say a magic thing and the bullet comes back out, but then <laughs> the, the wizard's never quite the same. Yeah, they still have memories of, like, the great beyond, but, like, I am a Dementor now. <laughs> Turns out we go to hell because, uh, magic is a sin. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Damn, if my middle school, known. my middle school Christian, my <laughs> Christian school was accurate all along. They yeah. tried to warn me. Yes, this witchcraft we've been practicing. <laughs> they hid those books in the back of the book fair, but I, I still snuck them out. Yeah, it's all this witchcraft, even though it's just a stupid pun. Even this with the witchcraft that they described in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to hell now. <laughs> Same exact thing. All right. Yeah. On that note, I think that's a good time to call it. 
Okay. Thanks everybody Bye. for watching. Sorry for all the fucking drop frames. We'll pick them up. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll scoop them up off the ground. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.